Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. It truly is a beautiful day to be in Jesus. Oh, and amen it is. Yes, it is. This is the ministry of Jesus Christ, Brother Thomas, with you here today. And a word of encouragement today to stay faithful to the word of God. Yes, indeed. Oh, and amen. It is the inspired word of God, the Bible that we're talking about here. And it can be trusted. Every word is true. And today it is under attack on so many fronts by so many who would discourage you to read it, to believe it, to trust it as the word of God. And we're just here simply to tell you today that you can trust God's word. It is to be truly trusted, oh, and indeed, and to be studied, and un, you know, absolutely. It is the inspired word of God, of course, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and that it translated God breathed, okay, by inspiration of God, God inspired it. The authors who wrote it, and in this case, it's Paul who wrote 2 Timothy, wrote by inspiration of God. They don't lose their personality and et cetera. They're, they're writing what God has given them to write or inspired within them to write. And it is faithful and true. It is the word that God would like you to know and to believe and to trust in. And you can, and it's good. It's all scripture, by the way. Now, when he wrote this to Timothy, they had the Old Testament, or what we call the Old Testament, the 39 books of the Old Testament. And we've added to that the 27 books of the New Testament, all put together in one book called the Bible. And it is the scripture. It is God's word, the written word of God written by the hand of men, but inspired by God. And it says exactly what God desires for it to say and to be believed on oh, hallelujah now, on oh, amen. <laughs> and it is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, all, all. There's nothing in here that is not profitable to be read and understood. From Genesis to Revelation, it all has its context and it needs to be understood in its context. No, we're no longer under the law, so we're not reading Leviticus to know the law and keep it. The law was given as a schoolmaster to lead us unto Christ. Jesus would tell the religious leaders, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are which testify of me, meaning the Old Testament. Genesis to Malachi, and it is profitable. Yes, it is. There are those today who would say it isn't, but it is. Every word of God's word is profitable, or it wouldn't be there. <laughs> and Paul wouldn't have written all scripture. He just said, my stuff, or the gospels, or the book of Acts, or some combination thereof. He said, all, all scripture. Now, once again, as we say, context, understand the context of each part of the book and how it applies to us today. Yes, indeed, but it's all profitable. And it's profitable for what? For doctrine? for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, profitable for reproof, correction, and for doctrine. Here's where doctrine is found. People may have dreams or visions, or you know, but that's not what you use to establish doctrine. 
the word of God is. For reproof and correction, for learning and instruction and for correction when we get out of the way and, you know, we find ourselves going down some theological path that get back on the track. Word of God, Lord, amen. It is. And for instruction in righteousness. How do we know what righteousness is? How do you know, we have the Holy Spirit that dwells in us 24 7 to guide us, help us, to move us along through the written word that we might know and understand. The word of God is how we know God. We read it in here. We come to know and understand what the word is telling us and showing us and instructing us and teaching us and sharing with us to know of God. And then it's put into practice in our lives and we have practical experience of these things. Mm -hmm. And so how do we know what the experience is? Is it a good experience, bad experience, or is it you know, by the word of God? Everything is checked through the word. And that's how we know. God pretty smart about putting it all together that way, you know? <laughs> so it's not pulled this way, it pulled that way, and up and down and left and right. And unfortunately, today I must tell you that world of social media, there is every voice imaginable out there speaking all kinds of things. Many things sound really good, but when you check them by the word of God, suddenly you find that it's not so good. There's errors in it. And so the word of God, prove it by the word. If you can't prove it by the word, mm -hmm. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Paul would say, yes, all right. And prove all things, hold fast that which is good. How are you going to prove it? By God's word. And so, good for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God or woman, the person of God, the child of God, may be perfect, that is complete. Mm -hmm. That you would be complete. And we're going to be brought to a true completion when this is all said and done, when God has worked his perfect work in your life, the day will come and that work will be completed. But that you might be perfect. Beautiful truth, actually. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished. You have all the tools, all the things you need unto all good works. Well, there's application. I mean, we put it to use in our lives. We preach and teach and walk and do those things that we do that God has called us to do in whatever ministry that he has called for you to be a part of. And it's not all just about preaching and teaching. It is how are we as spouses, husbands and wives, as parents to our children, as children to our parents? How are we as employees to our employers or employers to employees? All of these things are given to us to know and understand right here. That we might be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Yes. Previous to that, over in chapter 2, he says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babbling, vain babblings, for they increase unto more ungodliness. We usually just quote 15 and not 16. 
separate them out. There's so much in the way of vain and profane babblings these days. But study the word. Know the word. It's okay. You, you, you're allowed to do that. You can do that. Well, I can't. Think. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. In whatever level and capacity and staying in. God knows what's going on in your life and in your heart and what you need. Crack the book. And see what he shows you. You'll be all inspired. Truly, when you trust God and learn his word, learn of him, learn of God, study and get to know God. It's a beautiful thing to know about our Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. our Lord and Savior. We follow him. If you don't read of him, how do you follow him? If we are to be about our father's business, how do we know what the business is? If we know not his word. And not only in these things, but also in our relationship with God. And this may be first and foremost. To know God in that personal way intimately as he knows you to know his character to experience God in your life his love his peace his joy to know his power to be in awe of an almighty God creator of heaven and earth to know that he has loved you from before the foundation of the world and gave his only begotten son for you. Here we were created to have a very special relationship with God, to be his children and ultimately the very bride of Christ for us today. How wonderful that knowledge is. But in the process of it, those who were to be the bride of Christ sinned. And the wages of sin is death. But Jesus, our husband, to be <laughs> so no I'll die for them I'll die for my bride that my bride might live now, that's love and he came and bled and died was buried in a tomb it was a physical death. Jesus did die on that cross. His blood poured out. The innocent blood of a perfect lamb. The price. He paid that price. He was buried in the tomb. And on the third day he rose. That is the love of God that he sent his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. And that the son, the Christ, the anointed one, the deliverer, willingly came. And through a virgin birth, sinlessly entered his own creation. took on flesh and dwelt a while among us, experiencing all that we experience in life, being tempted in all points, sin not. A worthy sacrifice for our sin, but we could not pay it. There was no way that sinful man 
could redeem himself. Only God could. Only God can. Only God has. Thanks to Jesus, we can know it. We can know it, walk in it, and realize that by grace, the grace of God, God's unmerited favor, through faith, and faith in God, we trust God. By grace through faith, we have the gift of eternal life. It's not of works, lest any man should boast or a woman should boast. No one can boast of this. By God's grace, through faith in Jesus Christ, his finished work, the very love of God. And these things we know why and how, God's word, we take that step in faith, receive Jesus as our savior. Yes, then we know we have the experience and know that God is real, God is true, and God loves you. And you have the gift of eternal life. It's yours when you believe. Not maybe down the road if you're really good and keep the rules and the laws and Jesus. It's all Jesus. It's always been and is right now, right here today. Jesus. Oh, amen. Amen. And we know all of that because we know God's word is true. And we believe, we receive, we become, we experience it for ourselves and know. Almighty God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And fellowship, communion, the Holy Spirit. God's spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ, takes up permanent residence in us, dwells in us. We become the temple of God. How marvelous is that? And Christ will live out through us to others. The beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we know it in God's holy word. On amen, amen. May God richly bless and keep you in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his peace and joy. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.